Our next speaker is Erez Morabia from Rapid. Welcome, Erez. Thank you, thank you. Well, I must say a few things, okay? So allow me to. The author of Make Your Work Week Awesome, Erez's new book. <laughs> 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 An enthusiastic Agile coach with over 40, 40 guys, official Agile certifications from well-known leading organizations. Yeah. <laughs> And Ajime board member who share, as you can see, his great knowledge in every Ajime conference and forums. Erez will share today the rapid model for agility in a fast growing Decacorn who was able to maintain efficiency delivery. And Erez, maybe you will explain everyone what a Decacorn is. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> enjoy the talk. Thank you okay, for joining. Thank you, everyone. Let me share my screen. So I'm very excited to be here. I think it's my fourth year in a row that I'm participating in the great conferences of uh, Beyond Angel Israel. And every time I try to bring a different angle to, to agility. Um, I hope you will enjoy this session as well. Today we'll talk about Agile Unicorns. And when I say it's of unicorns, of course, I talk about, you know, startups value more than $1 billion. So we're trying to teach unicorns how to run faster by leveraging agile practices. And today we'll talk about how we created our own agile model, what it, that, what it even means to create your own agile model, what the challenges are, um, how you overcome resistance, and you know, what, what the impact you do on the organization, how you move forward uh, in general. So my name is Aris Morabi, I'm engineering manager at Rapid. I'm uh, leading teams both in Israel and in Iceland. I'm speaking a basic Icelandic barely. Um, it sounds like something like Gamanas Yausi, Kolpendayen, those kind of stuff. Um, and I'm also leading the age of transformation, or I would say more accurately, I'm improving the product delivery using age of practices. So let's just get in. So I want to start from the bottom line, really. So the bottom line is Rapid is in the fintech uh, industry. It's a fast growing startup. It tripled itself in the past two, three years. Um, you know, you can imagine how much, you know, energy it takes to move this you know, machine forward, especially when you take all, so many juniors into the organization. Now I joined Rapid one year ago and you know, the CEO was standing in the town hall and was saying, it was yelling, you know, people, we are moving too slow. We are a unicorn now. You know, we used to move fast when we were like 15, uh, 50 people back then, we moved fast because everyone knew what everyone is doing. You know, we didn't need to be too complicated. But now that we are like, you know, 400, 500, 600 people, we don't move fast enough. We need to move faster. Now, fast forward 10 months later, and we increased our delivery by 1.6. You know, we increased our cycle time almost by three. We reduced the cycle time almost by three, and we got into a zero defect policy at our close all our products. We have about 10 products over 25 teams, uh, which kind of significant impact on the organization. And now the question is, you know, how, how can you do this impact only within 10 months? So let's go back, you know, 10 months before or 12 months before when I joined Rapid, I was like, I was hired for being engineering manager in Israel and in Iceland. Um, nothing related to processes, nothing related to tools, no agile, whatever. Um, and I was just observing the organization for the first three months. Now I was, was lucky enough to, to be uh, positioned as the person that need to integrate the company that we recently acquired, this landing company, into Rapid. So within three months, I, you know, I got to know so many products, so many product managers, the R&D team leaders, the technology, because I was responsible to make sure the technology is merged together, the products are merging, merging together. Um, those are three months that you know, felt like three years, but there were three months. Um, and during those three months, I was just starting to list those challenges I saw in the organization and the opportunities for improvement. Like we didn't take decision based on data. You know, we had a lot of waste in our workflows. 
there was unclarity of requirement, complexity of the things how we did things, miscommunication and misalignment between the teams, between the different products, and so on and so forth. I just did a list of 24 problem statements and I kept them to myself. Now, the second thing I've done is that I took one of the teams in this integration. It was a DevOps team. I know nothing about DevOps. I mean, I know a bit, but I'm not coming from that uh, domain at all. But still, I took those, this, this team that is mixed uh, mixture of Israelis and Islamic people and was responsible to move all the infrastructure from the on-premise to the cloud. And I was starting to work with them on that. And we started to integrate a few agile practices and within a few weeks, they increased the delivery rate by five, which is very, very significant. So on one hand, I had my like problem statements. On the other hand, I had my like quick win. And I figured out I need to go to VP product and VP r and and see what I think about it. Maybe I can change their mind. So before I did that, I just you know, set this weekend and you know, just trying to figure out what I'm going to offer them to do at Rapid. And I, I, I figured myself, you know, I don't want to take like a building framework from the market. It doesn't really fit exactly Rapid, you know, not, not safe, not less, not Nexus, not the Spotify model. So I figured out I need to build something that is like a mixture of things that will really match the Rapid needs. And then I decided to call it Rapidility, you know, very, very sophisticated, rapid and agility, rapidility. And, you know, this is the actual screenshot from the paper. It still keep on my desk today. It was on April 10th. And this is where I sketched the vision on how I would like to see rapid behaving. Now I went to the VP product and VP r and I told them, you know, those are the 24 problem statements, you know. We tried a bit of the agile practices and see this wonderful quick win we've got in our hands. Um, what do you say about it? And they decided to give me a green light, you know, give me two positions and say, you know, you know go for it. We don't really know what you're talking about. Definitely not understanding your this sketch that you sketch on this piece of paper, but you know what? Give it a try. So uh, figure out, I figured out that I can do it alone, right? You know. Rapid is you know, exponentially growing. No way I can do it alone. So I need to bring the people. They gave me two positions. I'm going to use them. So I started to write a job description. So what, what I would like these people to, to know. So I figured out I wanted to have knowledge in product management and experience in product management. I wanted to have experience um, in, uh, in engineering. OK, I want them to know about technology. I wanted maybe leading technology teams before. I wanted to have some knowledge in Agile, maybe some a few certifications. I wanted to have knowledge, to have experience in Agile transformation. And then my manager came along and looked at what I was writing and he told me, no, where is, what are you doing? I told me, what, what do you mean? I'm, I'm writing a job description. And he told me, I don't know what you're thinking you're doing, but you're writing a job description for superheroes. You won't find those people. I told him, no, it will be fine. And two, two weeks later, I came to him again and told him, you know, Arkady is my manager. Uh, you were right. Uh, I did like 30 interviews in these two weeks. I didn't find those people. And this is where I figured out I need to change my strategy. And I started to do BIOP. Very, very powerful technique. You know what BIOP is? You just bring your own people. You know, that's it. So, you know, just head on to the people that I coach and mentor in the past. And I just brought them in. Um, and those people, they, they had all those skill set, but beyond the skill set, what they really had is high emotional intelligence. And this is what I really, really needed in the organization. So, you know, I, I got this green light, I got this bunch of people. This was my agile guild, and we started to run. Now, we, we had a lot of energy, a lot of motivation. And then, you know, what, what you get in the organization? Resistance. You know, people saying, you know, whereas, you know, with all the respect, you'll only three months in the organization, you know, we know to do it better or, you know, whereas, you know, we did this agile before, it doesn't work, we tried it, it doesn't work. Or, you know, we just, you know, whatever we do right now is perfect, you know, don't change that, it's the winning horse, don't, let's not change that. So a lot of either a fixed mindset or bad experience from the past, or just, you know, unwilling to, you know, to do things differently. And the question is, what are you doing when you hit that resistance? Are you fighting it or not? 
And what we have decided probably to do, I, I just said my angel did, you know, don't find a resistance. Instead, go and find the people that is, are willing to go with you along that journey, okay? Find the ones with the growth mindset, finding those early adopters, you know, build a coalition and move with them forward. And this is what we've done. We look for the people that we can work with them within the organization and we, we do pilots using them and generate a quick wins using those teams instead of fighting the resistance. Now, the question was, you know, you need, you need, you have your, you know, your agile model and you need to spread it in the organization. Are you going to do it like product by product or are you doing to be like, you know, dump it all, all at once? And, you know, I figured out that, you know, let's do both, okay? A bit of both. And then what, what does it really mean? So there are certain things that we wanted to do all at once. And there are certain things that we went, you know, we jumped between the product, we jumped between the teams to find opportunities. So with things like doing everything at once, we're like, you know, let's say, you know, basic metrics for everyone, you know, let's say the visual boards for everyone, set the data right, you know, what we measure, what we don't measure. So we have like evidence-based management kind of approach. Let's, you know, think the entire organization to the same cadence. Um, and so on and so forth. On the other end, there are a lot of other stuff and other agile practices. We wanted to go product by product or team by team because we find the pioneers, the one with the open-minded and the growth mindset that we can use to leverage those. So things like, you know, let's all work on our slicing techniques, you know, let's experiment with story mapping, you know, let's read down into refinement, better refinement sessions. Uh, let's say uh, change our sprint uh, planning you know, and make it capacity, velocity planning, empirical data based and not like fixed formula based, um, based and, and so on and so forth. So what we were really doing here is we were finding for opportunities to get into the organization. And this is how we you know, spread rapidity inside the organization. You know, you just find all you know, those small cracks and the pioneers in the organization and you just you know, we stepped in. Um, now, I want, in, in the next slide, I want you to walk you through on, on the big milestones we, we've taken in the, those past 10 months, okay? Just to give you an idea. Now, there were a lot of other details, you know, as we went, because this Agile Guild, you know, those three people that are brought, they're really working, you know, side by side with the teams on a daily basis. They, they're like adjusting them every in each day. But I won't like to describe the big, the big milestones we've done along the way. Um, so the first thing I've done, you know, what I just manifest to say is in the first guideline is, you know, people in interaction over processing tools, right? Right. So what did I did? I did the opposite. I went to straight to the tool. Now it, it seems a bit like a paradox, but you know, you need to base your decisions based on data. So my philosophy is that you know the tool needs to serve me. I don't need to serve the tool. So although I really favor people in interaction over processing tools, still you need some kind of minimal configuration in your tool to make sure where are you going to. So we are using Jira by Atlassian. So we just went to the tool, we decided you know, what is story, what is task, what we measure, what we put story points on, how the boards are going to look like, just to get a sense of where we are and start collecting data about the teams because there, were no, there was no data about the teams. The second step is that we drill down into the sprints. So, you know, Rabbit said, no, we're working in sprints, we are agile, and we drill down into the sprints. It was very, very waterfallish. Okay, so it was like, you know, seven days you're doing development, three days you're doing uh, live testing, and then you have like extra two days that you're doing regression, and then you move to the next sprint. So there is a lot of waste in there. I mean, when the, there is only development, what the QA people are doing, there is the testing, what the development doing, and when there is regression on only portion of the team's work is the rest of them are doing it. So what we, and, and, and the concept in Rapid was that sprint and release were tied together, where they were too much tied together. And we just disclose this huge conf confusion in the organization. And in order to detach this confusion, I started to, to go with a slogan. We just said, you know, let's go with the release the sprint concept. And the concept is really means, you know, your eyes is our own the task. You know, make sure when the task is being developed, it's going to testing. When it's testing done, you know, and defects to clean it and it's done. And 
by the end of you know, the two weeks, you just look on your done content and then you start a release process, which is outside of the sprint because you're always starting your next sprint. And just by you know, yeah, incorporating this slogan of release the sprint into organization, we gained like 20 to 30 uh, percent of more delivery content uh, from all the teams in the organization. Now, the next step is that, you know, we have a lot of products, we have about 10 products and, there, and each product is uh, as its own teams, uh, but they were not synced with each other. They were like moving in different cadences, but what we detect that is a lot of dependencies between those products. Um, so one of the things we've done, we decided, you know, rapid entirely, end to end, Israel, Iceland, wherever you are, you're going like in two weeks cadence, Wednesday to Wednesdays, and this is the, the, the perfect cadence for Rapid. Now, once you have this cadence in between all the teams, what we started to build down is to the refinement session, detect the dependencies and then start working on dependency management and coach the team to do dependency management between the products and which products mostly dependent on which other products. So we started to really drill down into the data and find those connections and help the team detect those connections and dependencies. The third thing we've done, we started to set metrics. But the metrics we wanted to set is that we wanted to bring the organization to, to you know, to look on the outcome, right? So we set like three balancing metrics, very basic, but they're very powerful. One is we're looking only on product delivery, product story points. I don't care about story points contributing to, to, to technology, just on product story points. On purpose, we did that because we want we be like extra focus on the product. And then the cycle time of these product stories. And the third one is, is about uh, defect strength. So we will be able to balance you know, speed with quality. And we say that you know, the team is, is development and create people and the product. You all together in the same boat. If someone lose, all lose. So we make the organization start and think, okay, I'm not being measured on my productivity as a developer, but I mean being measured as uh, my productivity as part of the team that need to take a task from uh, left to right. And you know, people starting to ask the right question, which enable us to coach them to the right direction. Um, the fifth thing that we've done is start to you know, say, okay, everything is working pretty much on the sprint level. Let's zoom out and see, look at robot management. And robot management was very uh, gant like fixed date kind of product management. And we switch that into something more dynamic, something that is more like an epic level, you know, with Kanban boards, with priorities and workflow management. Now at this point, everyone knew what Rapidility was, right? So the next point was a natural thing. We didn't even push for it. The next step was that other disciplines within our organization started approaching us and saying, you know, we heard about this rapidity thing. We know it helps you a lot in your know, R&D product uh, kind of domain. We want to try it out as well. So the PMO office came to us, the PMO organization came to us, the IT, uh, the security department, the business analysts that came to us and we started to work with those teams on integrating some of the rapidity practices into their work, um, work week. Now, along the way, we had a lot of challenges, right? I talked about- Erez, can I ask, can I interrupt with a question yeah. from the audience? Yeah. So you had one question and bringing you back to the previous slide when you said, that you synchronize between the cadence, we synchronize the cadence between the teams. So a question from Shirley, uh, you use one sprint for all or each team creates their sprint just sync in the time. Uh, that's good, 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 good question. Like um, about uh, four sprints ago, five sprints ago, we just one sprint in Jira for all. You know, there's one person, you know, completing the sprint and starting the sprint for, in, for about 160 people in the organization single sprint. Very, very powerful. Great question. It enable us to zoom out and give the VPR and D statistics about the entire organization out of the box, and you can zoom into a specific team. So today we have this capability to move, zoom out and zoom in through, um, throughout Rapid. Um, there's another question, security and IT, I'll go as well. 
Well, it, it, it now it's like it's, it's a security team. Uh, I don't know what Algo exactly means, but I know it's about security teams, about a business analyst, about uh, um, all the warehouse uh, uh, people. Uh, algorithms, uh, we don't have such departments, so I can't really say. Um, okay. So we, we got to a point that you know we, we, we integrated rapidity, but of course we had a lot of challenges. Now we had a lot of challenges. You know I talked about it in the last year. You know conference we talked about you know wage job practices messed up. So there is a lot of mindset. So changing processes and tools is easy, pretty easy, okay, relatively easy. But changing mindset is much harder. And and you know there, there are kind of stuff coming from the R&D managers like you know we better use Excel for planning sprints, uh, we better you know separate development and QA and optimize each one uh, separately. We better measure them separately in order to leverage them. You know doing these local optimizations or you know let's let's do capacity planning or sprint planning based on fixed formula. Like I have five people for ten days, let's multiple that and you know and then get some magic formula that will give us the right number. And from the other end, we have the product management, you know, they are pushing for 100% commitment. Doesn't matter that they never got, got it, but they are still pushing for 100% commitment. They're trying to get into details on what this development is doing and what QA is doing. And, you know, trying to influence what we measure or like, why don't we, you know, put story points or bugs and so forth. All of those challenges, we have to resolve them with the people now. Um, and again, it's, it's about resistance. But I talked before that about how we end on resistance. So you, you find the people you know, with the growth mindset, but still you get this, this resistance. And how do, you, how do you deal with that? And the thing is that what I, you know, if you ask my agile guild, they, they will tell you that what I'm usually saying, you know, let it fail. Really, just let it fail and wait. Wait in the end of the screen, collect the data, and then come with the numbers. And then start talking about what happened and try to say, okay, let's try something differently. Don't fight it from the start. Just let it fail and encourage those small failures. You know what? Maybe we are wrong. Maybe this won't be, it won't fail and it's actually a great success. Um, so this is our approach. You know, when you get hard resistance or something that doesn't seem logical, you know, we just let it fail and we wait by the end of the sprint or by the end of the two sprints and then we try to pick it up. Um, our sprint length is two weeks. This is a question from the audience. And did you deal with infra team that have a large portion of unplanned? Yes, I did. We can talk about it in the QA and QA session. Um, okay. Now I, I've got here to, to, to my last slide here, actually. So, you know, we talked about this, you know, within 10 months, we did quite an impact on the organization. You know, we, we we like we increased product delivery by 1.6. We reduced the cycle time of stories, the average cycle time of all stories that drop it. And this is a statistic on uh, 1,500 tickets by three, which is amazing. And we have zero defect policy at all, and all over the products. And we did it, you know, with this agile guild, you know, and of course we didn't do it ourselves. Of course, it's the, the teams that did a real job. Um, but what I'm, I'm trying to figure out, you know, looking back and what really helped me is that, you know, I, I love those two, two books and they are on my desk constantly. You know, those two books are already keep, you know, in, in, my, in my desk. And, um, and, and one of them says it's, it's, it's The Living Change by John Carter. It's about, you know, makes you no know, uh, sense of urgency. And this is what I did with the problem statements. The other one, you know, generate quick wins. And this is what I did, you know, with the design DevOps team that I told you about. And, you know, and building a coalition, you know, find the people with the growth mindset that can join you to the party and, and, and to this amazing journey. And the other book is the five dysfunctions of a team that, you know, what I'm taking from there is that like, the basic thing you need to create in the organization is really trust, right? Think about it, I was like a young manager, I wasn't hired to do anything related to processes and still after three months, they gave me a green light. Something I did on the way make them trust me to do that. So, you know, whatever you do, make sure you build the trust in the organization between you and your manager, between you and your colleagues, between you and your 
employees, you know, build that trust. And, you know, this is what we do in the HL Guild. You know, we work with trust. We are not aggressive on our approach. We are like collaborating with the teams and hearing what they have to do. And rapidity is not like we've planned everything, you know, from start and then we start, you know, bringing people in. Even that I sketched that in my head, I kept it to myself. So we started really small and then we started to grow. We grow not by the sketch that I put, but by the feedback from the teams. And people sometimes ask me, you know, why did you call it rapidity? You know, it's an agile model. You know, there's a lot of agile models are there. Why, why do you give it a name? So I think giving a name to your own, first of all, it, it's not any of those, you know, uh, agile frameworks out there. You know, actually, this is the picture that I, you know, I found now in my Google Photos just before the conference. I even didn't realize I have it. And this is you now it was a Saturday, the April 10th, and was you know putting all my books. I had like you no, know, I didn't tell you that you know in my past in my in my you know, like five years, in the past five years I did like more than 55 certifications. I know it's it's a scratch in my head, but I did more than 55 certifications. So I just you know took all the my books in, in my library, you know, about the age, famous age of frameworks, and I was start to collecting ideas and building something that's you no. Know, would match rapid and you no know, this is why it's not it's not safe it's not mess it's not the, the nexus it's not that um and if you brand it within the organization it gives it power it gives it, give it you know life and you know people connect to it you know we talk about we talk about fragility you know people know what you're talking about it's part of your culture and it's very very specific you know the workflows you use the, the metrics you use which practices Agile practices we've taken and what, what, what order we've taken them, you know, the events, the roles we are doing, everything is really tailored for Rapid. So if someone will come to me and say, you know, are you, are you doing Scrum at Rapid? You no, know, I would say not really, you know, partially. We're really doing Rapid agility. And the thing to, to remember, if I want you to go out of this presentation without this one sentence in mind is that, Rapidity is about improving product delivery. It was never intended to integrate agile practices into Rapid. Agile is just the engine, okay? And Rapidity is about hitting the goal, about improving product delivery. Whatever helps us to reach that goal, we'll do that. Of course, a lot of agile practices help us do that, but, it's, but agile was never the intention of that, okay? So agile is the engine, it's not the goal. Thank you very much.